Yeah. But I'm like, um, is, are those the same same reasons? You are really trying. How are you handling it so far? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm literally sweating. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, pain and concentration. <laughs> oh, snap. <gasps> okay, then I think we let's let's, let's, let's have going. the conversation. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Cool. Let's keep going. I'm so, punking. Would you? You're actually killing it. Would you say those are the same same reasons um, why you faced your music faced rejection when you when you were coming up, like a lot of rejection locally, or were those a sound issue? I think a, a lot of it was a sound issue. Okay. Um, you know, just the, the feeling that um, that was prevailing at that time is like, look, Kenyans are finally listening to Kenyan music, and the Kenyan music that they're listening to is this, you know, mm. homegrown uh, variant of pop, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're in Kapuka, and it's amazing. So if you come and you're not doing Kapuka, the feeling was, how can that music commercialize? Because uh, it was critical that people not only make music, but it has commercial success. And so the producers in that time were trying to have commercial success and not just trying over there to record babes, you know, experimenting or pioneering a, a version of this year pop. So I think there was a bit of that. I think there was also um, a question of, but it has to sound very much like home because mm. we've maybe spent many years trying to hear ourselves, mm. you know. And, and now home, here, home you mean? Kenya. The Kapuka, basically. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, Kenyans. I mean, you know, for a long time, you know, the music on the radio, there was a lot of Congolese music, a lot of uh, Tanzanian music, um, a lot of Benga, of course, in all its uh, variations, depending on the ethnic tribe. But I think a youth voice yeah. and, a, and an urban sound, I think it crystallized, you know, it started around Tedrasak, Kalamashaka, and, you know, that whole crew, that whole time and then evolved into this you know, thing called Kapuka, another style of doing the music, and it was very emotive. So I think that people probably thought, if you don't do Kapuka, mm. and they had just commercialized the success of it, you know, shows, you know, mm. endorsements, you know, pop culture. So there was a question of, if you're not doing this, what is that thing that you can do, and can it really commercialize? commercialize. So then I think that this idea of can it commercialize, and not just can it, commerci can it commercialize like quite now, I want to be where everybody is right now. I think this thinking really um, derailed the thing, the, how far things could have gone. Mm. Because then it's like, the, this is the framework within which we yes. are working. Like this is what it has to look like. We have a benchmark that works, so if you're outside that benchmark, Absolutely. then we're not sure what to do Absolutely. with you. You know, I had a conversation Absolutely. with Musioka about the same, because um, I, I, I had I had, I had when you said Musioka asked you to make Manyake songs for you to pop in the industry, and this is what he had to say. For the record, I never told Mudoni to make Manyake. Mm -hmm. It was a metaphor to mean a big song. A, hit Kenyan, song. a Kenyan hit song. You cannot do five Manyakes all sounding the same. It was a metaphor Unless to... Unless you're ethical. Ah, <laughs> I don't know how ethical that is. So this is the thing that uh, is, is really interesting. I don't think so. I don't think to pop I had to sound like Manyake. Chris Kage doesn't sound like Sailors. He doesn't. doesn't sound like And he's popping. So. But he's Everybody's popping. Everybody pops on their own terms. Everybody. The point is hot music, good music, well-written music, well-composed music, a full artistic idea. Right? Mm. That's the why Adele can have a number one and also, you know, a trap song can have a number one. It's not about the genre. It's the elements of the song. And I feel like that's a really important thing to, to think about because it's, it's, it's so limiting when you, on, like now, if you're only thinking like, I need to be a gangeton artist. No, you don't need you to don't be need a gangeton to. artist. There's space for everybody. There's space for everything. If you want to be a gangeton artist, you should ask yourself, what are you contributing? How are you pushing this sound? How are you making it more distinct? How does it have more personality? What is your, what is the perspective that you are bringing in the song writing? Yes. You know, that is interesting. Who is not represented? Which voice can you carry? This, I think, is what makes an interesting music industry when there's like a lot of different everything for everybody because the thing has to be all inclusive. Mm. If you don't include everybody, then it goes nowhere. Or you have a thing that now, say, reggaeton, 
it becomes the overwhelming way that the music from that region is understood. Mm. So all the variants that could have made the the the, the scene interesting and mm. pop, yeah. all those variants just get written off for this unless it sounds like reggaeton, yeah. then it can't work if you're from that area. Um, or if you look, say, um, yeah, I, I think yeah. I've made that. Like but I'm, but, but I'm, I'm, even the thing you're talking about inclusivity and just allowing every artist to present their real authentic work because yeah. there's space for everybody. I'm just wondering, that kind of exclusion, what does that do even mentally to an artist, especially someone on the come up? Like even during a time mm -hmm. when you're not getting airplay and you have this fire music, guys are giving you yeah. good feedback about the music, but it's nowhere, you know, it's just feedback, yeah. but no one is really supporting. Yeah. For someone who's really on the come up, and this is the thing I really want to do, what does that do to someone psychologically? Like, I mean, what, what, was, what was going through your mind? It's frustrating. It's frustrating because at some point you're like, is it me? Mm. Is it me who's the crazy one? Is it a one? me problem? Is this a me thing? Should I mm. be listening? But you're like, but what do you mean? The thing that, and I think in my case especially, the thing that I was being asked to use as a yardstick of, of, of something, you know, dope, I didn't think was that dope, right? Yeah. Um, so I wasn't convinced that that idea would be better than the idea that I was pursuing. Now, it didn't mean that my idea was amazing either. It just meant that my idea was my idea. And I think with artistry, you know, uh, great artists are, are, are nurtured. And I really think when you don't, when the artist when you just keep hearing sort of like rejection, 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 you start to think that maybe I don't belong here, yeah. maybe my voice doesn't belong here, maybe I have nothing to contribute here, maybe my story isn't worthy <coughs> here. Ooh, that looks, looks nice. nice. <laughs> you've handled it so well, by the way. You didn't even, you didn't, you, you've, not, you've not even gone to the drinks. <laughs> you've just handled it so well. Speaking of drinks. <laughs>